it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a different type of video, kind of a predictions if you will. Essentially I looked at my bookshelf, looked at kind of the books on my TBR I think I'm going to love and probably rate five stars. It's those books that I have honestly been meaning to read for a really long time and have honestly been putting off for no good reason, especially because in the back of my head I really feel like I'm going to love them and they're going to quickly become new favorites. I also think this video can be interesting because I'm curious to see if I'm right down the line. I can look back and say like, did I give these books five stars or did I hate them? Did I just think they were okay? Only one way to find out and that's to actually read them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the books that I think I'm gonna love. So the first one I would say is a pretty recent top of the TBR and that is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is book one to the live ship trilogy. I honestly think I'm gonna love this entire trilogy. I clearly really enjoyed the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. Each book was masterfully just built on top of each other and her character work is just one that is just so excellent. Something I just enjoyed immensely. So to be honest, I have incredibly high expectations going to the live ship trilogy, which honestly is a little scary because I want to love this so much, but I've also had so many comments from you guys saying that you like this one even more than the original trilogy, if that is somehow even possible. I also believe this has to do with like pirates and traitors, it's more seafaring is kind of my interpretation within this book. They're all very hefty, but I love Robin Hobb's writing and I also really enjoy how she builds her plots through each book. I really feel like she's able to masterfully create a wonderful foundation and then create scenarios where you just get so invested in everything, at least for the Far Seer trilogy, that was definitely the case. I also know that all of her trilogies, while different in terms of plot and characters and time are somehow all connected, um, which I'm very intrigued by. All that is to say I have very high expectations for this book. I really hope I love it. I feel in my heart I'm going to give it five stars and I also just really want to manifest that into reality because I want more Robin Hobb. I want to love more Robin Hobb. She has like shot up to one of my top favorite authors. So yeah, this is definitely a book I think I'm gonna love and I really hope I'm gonna love. Next book I have is The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. So here's the thing, this is more kind of speaking to the Wheel of Time series at large. The fantasy series I've been putting off my entire life, but also everyone in the fantasy space loves it. I also know that, you know, books themselves can kind of ebb and flow. Some of them are better than others. I'm really speaking to a specific book when I'm talking about my expectations of a five star moment, but rather the entire thing, this entire saga, this entire epic, all 10, 13 books that are involved. Also, Brandon Sanderson uh, wrote the last three, uh, which, you know, obviously gives me very high expectations given my love for Brandon Sanderson. This is like a cornerstone within the fantasy world. And the fact that I haven't read it or even started it um, is a little embarrassing at this point and simply said, I think I'm going to really like it. This is also a series kind of similar to the Live Ship trilogy is like, I wanna love, I really wanna be involved in the Wheel of Time fandom. There's so much content to consume there. There's also a television show coming out. Out. It just seems like the right time to like get very invested within this whole situation so I can just become like a wheel of timer. What's the name for that fandom? I'm just, I don't even know. A wheeler? <laughs> um, I want to be a part of it. I want to be part of the club. I want to love this. Um, I'm really just talking about books I want to love. The first two are definitely that. Expectations aside, like this is a classic epic fantasy about multiple characters, probably multiple lands, lots of different disparate storylines. Like that's kind of stuff I know I also really enjoy. So like the formula here exists that a lot of authors have tried to emulate since that I've really enjoyed. So it makes sense to go back to the source material. So there we go. Next is honestly the book that inspired this video and that is Middle Game by Sean McGuire. This is really because I'm embarrassed that I haven't read this book because ever since I read the synopsis, heard about this book, I was like, that is going to be a book I love. Like I just know from the pieces of the story and also just people's reactions to the overall like success of the narrative in itself. I just know I'm gonna love it. Like. <laughs> I love weird God-centric, you know, ascending to Godhood type narratives. I love weirdly connected characters. In this case, it's two brothers. I love this sort of middle space between controlling existence in your hand, but also exploring like the faults of Godhood and realizing that gods themselves are not all knowing in an existence. I love kind of a dark application of that. It also has alchemy in it. I also really don't want to know too much going in, but truly like a dark alchemy book about gods 
and two boys that are kind of stuck between fully reaching godhood and being, you know, mortals just speaks to me in my heart. I just, I love it. I love books like this. I feel like it's gonna have great morality. I feel like it's gonna be weird. I feel like it's going to have it all. And I'm here for it and I'm reading it this fall and I just truly think, I would be shocked if I didn't give this five out of five stars, which is a lot of expectation to put on a book, but I really feel like this book can handle it. Truly, I, tr I truly feel like it can. Next up, I have Gideon the Ninth, which is another book I hope to read this fall. This just sounds like so much fun and ever since I read the synopsis for the first time I was like I feel like this is going to make me laugh I think it's going to entrance me with like a really fast-paced plot I just think it's going to be kind of a unique reading experience it kind of walks the line between like very serious gory fantasy sci-fi but has like witty charming humor and dialogue which I just eat up as a reader and so like I I just feel like this is gonna deliver like a great reading experience on all sides and also reading the synopsis I feel like this would translate so well to like a movie I don't know yet but that's kind of like my feeling but this is a sci-fi fantasy story following lesbian necromancers in space and I think they're trying to save the world or destroy it in some capacity truly I heard space necromancers and I was like ah yes Time to read that book. I mean, this has also been nominated for like Nebula Awards and all of that, so it's very lauded within the larger sci fi fantasy community. So it's great to hear that sort of my instincts were right when I saw the awards come out. I was like, yes, okay, I think I'm gonna love this even more than I initially thought. The sequel just recently came out as well, so it seems like a perfect marathon scenario. But yeah, this just sounds like a clever, funny, gory time and I cannot wait. Next I have two newer like pickups for me. The first one is The Space Between Worlds. This is a sci-fi book that honestly called me so much and I've heard really excellent things about it though it did just come out but like early reviews are strong. This is also one of the reasons why I'm pushing myself to read more sci-fi because when I kind of encountered this synopsis I was like I think I'm gonna love that and also Reagan you should probably read sci-fi because there's so many amazing sci-fi books to read. But anyway, that's a discussion for another day. But this is a story that centers around multi-universe travel. Um, and essentially it's now possible, but there's one catch that you can't travel to another parallel existence if you yourself reside in that existence still. Luckily, or maybe not so luckily, our main character, Kara, this is not a problem because she has died in 372 different worlds. So this allows her to be kind of like one of the top parallel world travelers. And this kind of gives her an a chance to elevate in status within Earth. The plot begins to thicken when some of her last remaining existences begin to be killed off. This kind of throws her in the midst of some sort of mystery and also she's fighting for her life. And I also hear there's an incredible sapphic romance in this, so I don't know, it sounds really intriguing, kind of thriller, whodunit, but in space and multiverse travel and existence. Lots of things that really catch my eye, and yeah, so this is another book I think I'm gonna love. Next up, we have the book Taking Book Two by Storm, which is Jade City by Fonda Lee. This is said to be kind of like Game of Thronesy meets Godfather sort of thing, and it's very much centered around city politics with lots of great morality thrown in there, which I love. I love fantasy political drama so much. But essentially this is set in a city where two families kind of vie for power and prestige in that they both kind of control the trade of jade and jade is like king because if you can consume jade you become very very powerful and power obviously in a in a world where you know money talks and power keeps you in control is obviously very important but there's a new drug at the beginning of this book that's introduced from the outside which kind of allows the general person or just more people to be able to consume jade which kind of kind of changes the power balance within this city. And I think these two families who were once at odds maybe have to work together to kind of maintain their hold. I have heard amazing things. This has apparently action. It apparently has a sizzling romance and just so much. And also the sequel, everyone is like saying how amazing it is. This is a book I just truly feel like might become a new fave. I can't wait. And I love books about like, I don't know, bad people kind of doing bad things, but also you kind of like them. You know, like that that line, that walking the line of gray morality. I'm here for it. Cannot wait. Next up is a book I've honestly been putting off, and that is The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. I've obviously read the first two books in the Lies of Locke Lamora series. The first one I gave five stars, the second one I gave four stars, but I truly think this third one might be my favorite of the three, just depending on the reviews I've seen. Also, the storyline going through the second one, 
wow, really peaked in a way that I wasn't anticipating. So kind of seeing those narrative threads play out in this third one, I have very high expectations for. I've been putting this book off because I don't know when the fourth one is coming out. And I obviously don't want to be disappointed and waiting forever like I am for some other well known fantasy series. That being said, I really love this. It's a really clever story following our main character, Locke Lamora, who is a thief, and he basically hustles a bunch of rich people out of money constantly. And through the first two books, you kind of follow his really grand schemes that I love because they always trick me. And I really find a lot of satisfaction when I don't know what's going on. And then all of a sudden you see all the pieces come together and you're like, wow. I love being tricked by books. I honestly try to be tricked by books. I never try to outsmart it. I just want to go for the ride and oftentimes like that doesn't always happen but when it comes to Scott Lynch fantasy novels his thieves are very clever and I never can figure it out and it's amazing but yeah I'm really excited for this third one I really think I'm gonna like it obviously it's part of this video so yes and the last book I'm gonna chat about is Upon a Burning Throne and this is book one to a new Indian mythology inspired fantasy series. The reason why I think I'm going to love this book is because Starla loves this book and generally speaking our tastes align almost exactly. So because of that I bought it because of her and I really feel like I'm going to love it because of her. But this is essentially a retelling of a very famous Indian mythology story and you essentially follow a group of siblings who are all trying to like vie for the power of the burning throne. Um, and the issue is usually the throne picks one person but they technically chooses all three but also nobody wants any of the siblings to rule. I think this also shatters things down political lines and there's now like civil war at play. Again this just seems like a really intricate political fantasy novel with a lot of court politics and a lot of siblings vying for power which are all buzzwords I love. I also have not really read a lot of Indian based fantasy and I really want to expand and read more of that just in the future. So this seemed like a very logical place to start because I've heard such good things about it. But yeah pick this up and I think I'm going to really love it. Alrighty guys, those are my predictions for the books I think I'm gonna love and give five stars. Let me know down below if there's some books that you have on your shelf that you think you're gonna really like, because um, I would love to know, you know, always adding things to my TBR. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!